So what does it mean to bring joy to your creative career? How can you infuse joy into everything that you do as an artist? So a few days ago, I saw one of my favorite artists perform. He's a musician by the name of Josh Ritter. Uh, you may know him. If not, I'll put him up on the screen here. Uh, I've been seeing him perform for the last 15 years, and every time I see him perform, I think the same thing. And you know, every time I tell somebody about him, whether it's going to see him live or listening to his records, I tell them the best part about him isn't his music. Now, his music's amazing, but the best part about him is his joy. See, Josh brings joy to everything he does when he's on stage. If you're watching him perform, you feel joyous. You see the light in his eyes. You see the happiness. You see the joy. And it's beautiful, and it is completely intoxicating, and it makes you fall in love with him by the time the show's over. And every time I've seen him, no matter what, this has been the case. So I want to do this for a really long time. Not specifically YouTube, although that would be cool too. No, I want to, I want to do art for the rest of my life. I want to let my creativity be the reason that I live and the thing that sustains me and my family. And that's really scary. It's, it's a really concerning thing to, to want to do because I don't know if you know this, but it's really, really hard to make a living as an artist. Now, I'm, I'm privileged enough to try and make my way in this world as an artist, and there's lots of places in the world and people in this world where that's just not an option in that place or for that person. I recognize that and I, I see that that's beautiful. And uh, with that caveat, I would like to say that I think the most important thing we can do as creators, as people who are lucky enough to make this our job, or at least try to, is to infuse our joy and our values into our work and ensure that everything we do aligns with that. And one of the things that brings me the most amount of joy is sunsets. So that's why we're out here right now instead of in my uh, apartment filming. What I'd like to offer to you is that you can actually be fulfilled in your career while infusing it with something like joy or purpose or meaning or value and that that is actually essential and that is how you will create great work and that's how you will get more clients and that's how you will become a better person. Now, I think it's pretty clear that this video is not for the algorithm, it's for me. It's not about gear, it's not about tech, it's not about Fujifilm or portrait techniques. It's about aligning yourself with your values and creating a mission for yourself in your art. Sorry, algorithm, you're not gonna like this one. But hopefully somebody out there takes value in it and they can share it with somebody else and it can be a bit of a salve for what can feel like a pretty painful existence as an artist. Look at that sunset. So if you're an artist like me, you're in an interesting position right now because you can either choose to create art that you think people will like or that will make you money or that will bring you value or that will do all three and that really is the goal I think that's my goal I'm trying to live in my values and my purpose and create great art just like hopefully you are and in order to do that I had to kind of come to terms with what it meant to create great art for myself and for this world and, and for other people now for me that meant having a mantra now, if you don't know this about me, my spirituality is rooted in Hindu and Buddhism and all kinds of different isms all kind of smashed together because I wasn't really raised with anything. And my goodness, if that is not proof of something, I don't know what is. But whether or not you ascribe to mantras or visions or statements or anything like that, I think it's important to have an idea of what you're trying to do and to, to give a name to it, to give voice to it. And you know, I couldn't really think of anyone better than my guru Ram Dass to kind of express what it means to be in line with your values in your life. He said, I want my life to be an act of love and compassion and where it isn't, that is my work to do. Now we're losing daylight, so I'm gonna have to hurry this up. But what I've essentially done is stolen that entirely from Ram Dass, and I've decided that I want my photography to be an act of love and compassion, and where it isn't, that's my work. Now that's my vision and value and purpose and meaning for what I do, but what about you? What's yours? How do you find yours? I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, but here's a few things that helped me other than just stealing it from Ram Dass. Uh, you know, it was a great line, but I had to make sure it actually made sense for me and for what I want to do. 
So here's a few things that I think you can think about when you're trying to come up with your own mission, vision, values, mantra, spiritual framework for your photography or videography or art or acting or, um, I don't know, cooking, whatever it is you do that brings you closer to you. First thing is value. What do you value in this world? What do you care about? Uh, for me, this couldn't be something tangible. Maybe it could be for you. Uh, you know, I love cameras. I love tech and I love car. Well, I don't really love cars. I like weird cars. For me, it's not tangible. It's not real things uh, that I can touch. It's, it's, it's my family. It's my pets. It's my partner and her son. It's uh, going out into nature, it's running, it is building a connection, it's having empathy for people, it's, it's being a part of this world as a spiritual being having a physical human experience. That's my value. Now you don't have to value those things, those are my things. If you valued those things I'd say how do you know my partner and her son? But uh, certainly you do need to value something because we're in this very beautiful magical world here and there must be something of value, think. It's easy to feel that way looking out on all this. I hope the sky is not too blown out for you to see that. So maybe you just need to ask yourself, what is it that I value? And that can be your first clue as to what your vision needs to be. Number two is inspiration. What inspires you? You know, there's photos that I see that move me so deeply in a way that I didn't think they could, in a way that I didn't think was possible. And they do. Uh, I'm inspired by that, but on a deeper level by you know, maybe a broader level. I'm inspired by the people I see who give themselves completely to what they do. You know when you see those artists who you can tell they live their life entirely by what they are doing for their art? That is beautiful. That is something that is so inspiring and moving to me and I, I love that. That is special to me. Or when you see somebody who has given their life to service, a great saint or a yogi who's there to help free people and liberate people, or people on the ground who are helping people, feeding people, taking care of people during times of war and famine and unrest, that inspires me. That makes me want to get out and do the work. Um, but there's nothing more inspiring I could create than all this. So maybe it's just trying to touch the hand of God for a minute. Uh, through a sunset or something like that. Okay, this one's a little less fun, a little less esoteric, but uh, it's kind of rooted in something very real, which is reality. What's the reality of all this, you know? Can you actually live by those values? Can you actually take that inspiration and go out into the world? For me, I have to ask myself that a lot. Can I show up at this portrait shoot or can I show up at this commercial shoot and, uh, and be there in a place of love, in a place of compassion, in a place of kindness? Can I do that? If I can't, is that a problem with me at that moment? Or is there something fundamental about that shoot that is not aligning with my values? And is that the kind of work I want to take? You've got to answer that for yourself. I can't answer it for you, but is it rooted in reality? Because if I can't take all those feelings and put them to work, they're just feelings. It's just a good idea. It's, it's not going anywhere. It's not helping this world. It's not being a part of the healing of this universe that it so desperately needs. And maybe that's a lofty goal for just a portrait or going to a corporate headshot thing, but hey, what the hell? Maybe I can help somebody feel good. You know, one of my big, big goals within portraiture is to photograph all of the men that have helped me through their creativity to become who I am today. The reason I want it to be men is because I think the men that have inspired me most are the ones who have sort of thrown off the shackles of manhood as we know it and have said I'm okay with being vulnerable and emotional and honest and and letting my feminine energy come through and, and those are the ones that have inspired me the most and so by the way Josh Ritter is a, a big one on that list and, and I hope I get to photograph him one day but the whole idea of rooting yourself in the reality of what you're shooting is that it shouldn't have to be those big peak experiences for you to be able to show that beautiful kind, joyous, humorous, loving nature to the people in front of your lens. Finally, honesty. Are you being honest with yourself? Is this really what you want? Is this really your value? You know, you can pull the wool over pretty much everyone's eyes, but if you pull it over yourself, pull it over your own eyes, you're gonna start looking inwards and you're not gonna last very long looking inside if you don't like what you're seeing. So that's the reality. You gotta ask yourself, am I really cut out for this? And uh, can I actually infuse all those values into whatever it is that I'm, I'm trying to do? If the answer is no, 
that's a tough one because either those values aren't as meaningful to you as you thought they were or this work you're doing isn't going to get you there. Maybe I think I'm supposed to be a photographer and I take a deep look in and I, I realize that I can't live a life of love and compassion while being a photographer and I got to do something different. That's scary and uh, that could be in a reality one day. I don't know. I really don't know. I hope it doesn't get to that point, but it might. And I don't know. Then I, then I have some big questions to ask myself. But for now, I think I can do it. For now, I think I can be loving and kind and honest and that's all good. But that remains to be seen. That's just today. That's just this sunset. Who knows what tomorrow will bring. But I know that if I root myself in honest feelings and if I try and be really real about what it is I can do and I'm inspired by others and I think about my values deeply enough, I'm going to find work that aligns with those. Okay, so that's it. That's everything I have to say right now, basically. Thank you, Josh, for reminding me of my spirit and of the things that I love the most. And uh, I can't wait to hear about what you have to say. Let me know in the comments below what, what moves you, what your passion is, what you're excited about, and where your vision lies, and, and what you hope to bring to this world through your art. And I'm very curious to see. And uh, thank you. I appreciate you. And uh, we'll talk soon. Okay. Peace.